Over this past Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called in our baptism. To our wonderment, God never wearies of forgiving sin or giving peace of reconciliation. Reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor, then enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. On Ash Wednesday, as we began the season of repentance and confession, you came forward to receive the ashes of acknowledged mortality and commitment toward repentance. Now. As we are willing to leave the weight of our carried sin and shame with Jesus, we will use oil to make a cross again on our foreheads. This time we are invited to experience in our anointing the absolution, the forgiveness of our sins, promised and received through Jesus Christ our Lord. In our separate locations, we will use oil to make the sign of the cross on our own forehead if we are alone, or on the forehead of another with whom we are gathered. As fits your circumstances, make the anointing, saying the following or similar words. In obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. We now pause to do this anointing. God's forgiveness is for you, freely given at great cost, because of God's great steadfast love for each of us. Accept God's gift and rest in God's love and grace. I humbly and gratefully receive Christ's forgiveness. Amen.
the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. you. Eternal God, in the sharing of a meal, your Son established a new covenant for all people. And in the washing of feet, he showed us the dignity of service. Grant that, by the power of your Holy Spirit, these signs of our life and faith may speak again to our hearts, feed our spirits, and refresh our bodies through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this time for the hearing of the gospel. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him for this reason. He said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he, he put on his robe and returned to the table. Then he said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord. You are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do also as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, on this night of your betrayal, we gather together to think about what you went through because of your love for your people. We ask that your spirit will inspire us in the time of this service and continue to move within us in these three days. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So that picture you just saw of the little baby having its feet kissed, that's about the last time most of us are very comfortable um, touching and, and um, kissing on little feet, 
are those little bitty people that have just been born and have not been putting their feet on the ground to get all dirty. Most of us are not that comfortable with feet. Although we all started our life using our feet as the way we communicated. I used to teach teenage parents and that's one thing I learned in infant massage is that um, we tend to react as little children that are just born with our feet as our parents talk to us. So our feet are extremely important to us even before we can walk upon them. And our feet, once we start walking, take us all over the place, sometimes doing God's will, sometimes not. But the older we get, the more we've been putting weight on our feet and scuffed through all sorts of dirt in our lives, both metaphorical and real. So most of us are not comfortable touching feet. And unless we kind of dehumanize or just don't think about the humanity of the other person touching us, like when we go to have a pedicure, we, we know that's what they do, and we don't have relationship the same way with them. But most of us, washing even our spouse's feet maybe, our mom or dad's feet, our best friend's feet, just doesn't suit us as that comfortable. Jesus, on that night, he had not long before that had his own feet anointed in what might have felt to many as an awkward way, with oil and wiped off with hair because Mary anointed him for his death to come. This night, he knows that he is going to be betrayed. And as they are getting ready to share a meal, instead of having a, a servant come in and do the feet, which at that time was a necessary uh, aspect of hospitality, you wash the feet. Because you wore sandals, you trucked through mud, you don't know what else on those feet. So you have them wiped off. And Jesus, Lord and Savior, teacher, most revered one, the one you would never anticipate doing this sort of thing, um, gets himself ready as a servant. And he kneels at the feet of his disciples to wash their dirty feet in one of the most intimate and caring and loving actions, a, a way of demonstrating to his disciples that he was one with them and cared for them. Even Peter had trouble accepting this from Jesus. I imagine the others did too, but Peter's the local one. Are we that much different now? While we kind of resist the fact that we are in isolation from COVID, I'm willing to bet there are more than a few of you that are going, well, at least we don't have to be challenged to have our feet washed this, uh, this year. And it's that resistance, that discomfort, how few people actually come up to have their feet washed, that tells us something about ourselves that we hold a part of ourselves back from one another, that we don't trust the dirtiness and, and bumps and lumps of our own feet to another because someone might see us more clearly than we want them to and reject us. We don't feel comfortable massaging the feet and washing the feet of another person because it puts us in a different relationship with them. Jesus did not just wash feet that night of those that were in support of him. The passage we jumped over was the passage that acknowledged Jesus was going to betray him. The passage right after this is when Peter turns his back on Jesus and denies him. So it isn't just washing the feet of those that we are in close relationship with, that we get along with, but at opening ourselves to the possibility that we need to wash the feet of others that we don't very much care for, that we have to extend the forgiveness and care of Jesus to people we don't know and people we don't like. That is the type of love that Jesus is calling us to. 
And in this passage, he's only talking about the, the love we share with one another. But it's hard to give sometimes. So this night, we remember all that Jesus did and all that Jesus taught. And we ask Jesus to help us acknowledge our own discomfort and then move past it to live as he lived to our best of our ability. And every time we fall down and have to admit that we aren't very good at this, we get up again and ask Jesus' help. And maybe next year, come forward and have your feet washed and wash the feet of others that you may not be related to. I think this would be a gift to all of us. Amen. On this night, we have heard again Jesus' commandment to love one another as he has loved us. We who receive God's love in Jesus Christ are called to love one another, to be servants to each other as Jesus became our servant in acting love. Our commitment to this loving service is signified tonight in the washing of feet, seeking to follow the example our Lord gave us on the night of his death. Embrace the discomfort and sense of vulnerability as we experience in receiving this intimate expression of love as we consider living out what Jesus has charged us, charged us to do as his disciples. Jesus says, if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, then you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Where charity and love are found, there is God. Amen. Amen. table, let us come recognizing who we are, beloved children of our loving God. We now pray. O oh Christ, in your presence we discover who we are. We, we hear about washing feet, are we need to not participate in the gathered community, and thus we learn how reluctant we are at our heart to serve one another, even as we contemplate your willingness to give yourself for the sake of the world. We are distracted by our own wants and needs. Our love for others scarcely suffices to fulfill the requirements of good manners, and yet you invite us to eat with you at your table. Forgive us, holy God, and help us to value your presence more dearly 
and eagerly share your love with others, that we may find this meal we share to be a celebration of joy. Amen. And now we acknowledge the time of offering, remembering that we, at all these points in worship, spend time thinking about how it is God has provided for us and the ways in which we allow the gifts to flow through us to impact the world. So as we have a gathering of tithes and offerings, as well as thoughts of our very being, um, just a reminder that we have online giving, and thank you for those that are signing up more and more for that, as well as all of you who are sending your checks in through the mail. We give thanks that we can continue to do ministry because of your generosity. We now pray together. God, the glory, receive these gifts and offering of our lives. As Jesus was lifted up from the earth, draw us to your heart in the midst of this world, that all creation may be brought from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, and from death to life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Monday Thursday is also a night when we remember the Last Supper that is the grounding of what we share every week in the Eucharist. Hear are these words from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The words that we hear in forgiveness come from the Gospel of Matthew. Yes, it was on that night when Jesus knew what was to come. When his heart, no doubt, was full of fear, his love for his disciples kept him with them to teach them and be with them, to reassure them for the future, for all that was to come, to help them move past even their own denial of him. That night, he not only washed their feet, but he took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he reminded the disciples in that book of John that they would never be alone, that the Holy Spirit would be with them and lift them up and give them courage and give them the words to speak just as the promise is for us. Let us pray together the words that our Lord taught us as our table grace. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Jesus' body and blood, strengthen, keep, and unite us, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May the sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that in the way we live, the fruits of your redemption will show forth. For you live and reign with the Creator and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he came to them. I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you could not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still sleeping, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. 